All right. So uh, the Civil War, uh, collecting the ships from the Civil War is uh, quite challenging. Uh, we start off uh, just to understand what, what is what here. There were two types of ships, basically. Uh, you had the riverine ships, which were generally Mississippi river boats that were converted into gunboats, ironclads, and other types of vessels. And then you had the seagoing type ships, uh, which were uh, frigates and sloops. Uh, they were uh, wooden hull for the most part, uh, but uh, powered by steam. Uh, the ships were arrayed around the southern ports in uh, four blockading squadrons. You had the North Atlantic, the South Atlantic, the East Gulf, and the West Gulf. Uh, the riverine ships were primarily active on the major rivers, the Ohio, Mississippi, James River, uh, Tennessee River, Cumberland, and Red River in Texas. Uh, the Civil War was a time of uh, invention. Uh, when it began, uh, there were, the rifled artillery was something new. Uh, the use of uh, iron as uh, armor on ships, that was invented during the Civil War. All right. So it, it, was a, it was a time of discovery. So let's start and look at some of the covers. Now it's left click. Okay, this uh, slide shows uh, the Confederate ironclad Albemarle. Uh, on the lower left, there's a picture. Uh, the envelope uh, is in the upper right. Uh, it has a return address on the Albemarle and it's addressed to another ship that was captured by the Confederacy uh, called the Water Witch. Uh, a picture of that is at the lower right. Uh, the Water Witch had to be destroyed. The Union uh, ships were closing in and uh, rather than risk its recapture, uh, the South burned the ship. The Albemarle, however, uh, was uh, taken under fire. Uh, it was sunk in the Roanoke River and it was uh, ultimately raised by Union forces at the end of the Civil War. Uh, the Albemarle was a fairly successful Confederate uh, ironclad. Uh, this uh, picture is uh, uh, of the uh, Confederate ironclad Atlanta. Uh, the picture is after its capture by Union forces. And you can see this is another riverine vessel this is not a seagoing ship. Uh, very distinctive uh, styling on Southern ironclads. Uh, this is a uh, ship called the Autocrat. Uh, it was a, the headquarters of the um, uh, Mississippi Marine Brigade. And most of us have heard the name Ellet from our collecting of naval covers. Ellet was an admiral in the Union Navy. Uh, this was his headquarters ship. And uh, you notice uh, the notes on the left of the envelope, uh, they're uh, by General Sherman who signed the cover. So this is a particularly nice uh, envelope. Uh, this is another Confederate ironclad called the Baltic. Uh, this one had a faulty engine, so it was uh, very difficult to maneuver. Uh, it did uh, operate during the Battle of uh, Mobile Bay. Uh, it ended up being captured. Confederate covers, by the way, are extremely rare. Um, very, very difficult if you find one for sale uh, it, it's, it's almost a once in a lifetime event. This is a uh, gunboat, again, a riverine. This is an ironclad uh, called the Benton. And you can see it was active. It was active at uh, Vicksburg, uh, the Battle of Memphis. 
and so on, very uh, famous battles, and it was present for many of them. This is a headquarters ship called the Black Hawk. Uh, and you notice the name on the uh, cover. Uh, you'll see uh, uh, Captain uh, uh, Breeze. And again, you'll know that name from our naval cover collecting. Uh, this is a very distinctive ship. As you can see, it has a, a checkered uh, design. Uh, this is the uh, Brooklyn. Uh, this is a screw sloop. So this was an ocean going vessel. Uh, it was also present. It did go up the Mississippi and fight at uh, the fall of New Orleans. Now you notice on the cover, it says do three. Uh, the Navy or the, both the Navy and the Army had an agreement with the post office uh, that uh, the mail from soldiers and sailors would be delivered without stamps. Uh, so that's the do three notation. It was payable upon receipt by the recipient. This is another famous uh, ironclad. This is a riverine ironclad again, called the Carondelet. Uh, as you can see, it was, uh, at many of the famous battles, again, uh, the Battle of Memphis, um, it fought the Arkansas, uh, it was at Vicksburg, and so on. Here's a very odd looking one. Uh, this is called the Choctaw. And this was a Mississippi river boat that was uh, sheathed in armor and it fought at uh, uh, Vicksburg. Uh, it also went on a Red River expedition. You can see this is at Vicksburg itself. You'll notice the uh, there's a hill in the background of the ship, and that's the courthouse uh, at Vicksburg. This is the Cincinnati, another uh, riverine ironclad. Uh, the picture down at the lower right, uh, one of the uh, southern uh, strong points in the Mississippi was uh, a fort called Island Number no. Ten in the in the Mississippi, and uh, the uh, North uh, Northern Fleet took it. Here's the Colorado again, a seagoing ship, a screw frigate. Uh, there's two things to, to note here. On the lower cover, lower right, you'll notice a cancel, a named ship's cancel. Uh, these are extremely rare. Uh, basically, these were found after the Civil War. Uh, 1860s, 1870s, uh, extremely rare to find, but it exists. Uh, the top cover uh, is addressed to the Colorado uh, at Fort Pickens. Fort Pickens was a fort outside Pensacola uh, that refused to secede when Florida seceded. And the Union held that fort throughout the Civil War. OK, this is the Congress. Now, this is a sailing frigate. This is famous because it was sunk by the uh, Virginia slash Merrimack. Uh, as you can see, there's a picture in the upper left of the uh, Virginia attacking and setting the Congress on fire. Hmm. This is the Cumberland. Likewise, this ship was also uh, part of the blockade at Norfolk and the Virginia came out and uh, rammed and sank this ship as well. And here you can see another uh, cancel on the uh, lower left, US ship three cents. Uh, you'll see different kinds of cancels. Some say US ship, uh, some have this cancel. 
Uh, again, that was for free mail privileges for the uh, sailors. Uh, okay, I, I don't recall who was a collector of uh, hospital ships, but here's one from the Civil War. This was called the DA January. And uh, this was commissioned by the Sanitary Commission, which uh, handled wounded troops for the Union. And uh, during its uh, lifetime, it uh, transported over 23,000 wounded to hospitals in the North. Uh, this is another uh, ship called the Dakota, another screw sloop. Uh, this is a gunboat called the Dai Ching. It was uh, being built for China. Uh, the North had uh, need of additional ships, so they retained it and carried forward the name Dai Ching. Uh, this is a uh, another river ironclad. Uh, this one was being built by the South. However, the North uh, captured it uh, before it could be destroyed, and it became part of the Union uh, fleet. Uh, this is the Essex. And the Essex, a picture of it is at the lower right. It's a very distinctive style. These were called Pook, P-O-O-K, gunboats. Uh, there, there were a number of these that were built in exactly the same configuration. <laughs> this is the Fawn, uh, which is a stern wheel gunboat. And here you can so, still see the Mississippi steamer, uh, except that uh, they're now, uh, it's now armed with cannon. This is the Galena. Uh, it was one of the first ironclads. Uh, the North had hopes that uh, the ironclad uh, armor would protect the ship. Uh, they sailed it uh, up river, up the James River towards um, Richmond, hoping that it would survive the fortifications along the way. Uh, it did not. Uh, there's an insert in the picture on the upper left where you can see that uh, uh, there have been shells that have blown their way through the armor. So it was not a success and they North had to give up the effort to take Richmond by the river. Uh, this is a tugboat and you'll notice on the lower right, there's a number three on a stack. Uh, that's this particular ship called the Gamma. Uh, it was a tugboat during the Civil War. Uh, this is uh, the General Sterling Price. Uh, this started uh, its life as a uh, uh, cotton clad. Uh, it uh, fought uh, Union forces. However, it was uh, uh, captured and became part of the Union fleet. No, it became Union fleet. Uh, this is the Harriet Lane. Uh, this was a uh, revenue cutter uh, that was drafted into the U.S. Navy. The Harriet Lane has an interesting story. Uh, it was part of the Union defense of Galveston when it was attacked by Confederate forces. Uh, the Confederates succeeded in taking the ship. Uh, the executive officer was dying on the deck. Uh, as the Confederate officers came aboard to take the surrender. And it was only then that uh, one of the officers was the father of the XO who was dying on the deck. So he saw his son die at the hands of his troops. The Hartford, uh, you're familiar with the fame here. 
um, dam the torpedoes. Um, here again, you can see there's a named cancel for the Hartford. In style. Uh, the Housatonic is extremely uh, famous. The Housatonic was the first victim of a submarine uh, sunk by the Hunley. Uh, very few casualties. Uh, the Hunley, as you know, went down with all hands, uh, but uh, the Housatonic became the first ship sunk by submarine. Did someone have a question? Uh, this is a uh, ship called the Hunchback. And you can see a very weird shape. Uh, this started its life as a ferry boat and was drafted into the U.S. Navy for service on southern rivers. Uh, this is another Confederate ironclad called the Huntsville. Uh, this one was not completed uh, when it was attacked uh, during the Battle of Mobile Bay, uh, the South ended up scuttling the ship to try to uh, save Mobile from being invaded. Uh, this is the Iroquois. This is a uh, screw uh, sloop. Um, it was very active during the war. Uh, this is a mortar schooner, and these played a role early in the Civil War. Uh, they were uh, brought up to forts guarding the approaches to New Orleans, and uh, they bombarded the forts as the fleet sailed upriver to take the city. Uh, it was also used at Vicksburg. Oops. John Rain, that's another side wheel uh, Mississippi steamer. Um, this was uh, used on the Red River expedition, which was a catastrophe. Uh, the river uh, water dropped and the Union fleet only barely got, got out of there intact. The Kearsarge, uh, another very famous ship. Uh, this was the uh, uh, sloop that sank the greater Alabama. Uh, the ship lasted a long time uh, into the late 1890s, I believe. Uh, it's, it sank on a reef, unfortunately. Uh, the Lehigh is a monitor uh, this would have saw service primarily uh, at Charleston. Uh, the uh, North kept a very tight blockade of Charleston and monitors were needed because Charleston had so many forts, uh, a wooden ship could not survive. So they would send the monitors in to engage the forts. Uh, this is a ship called the Lexington called a, tin, uh, a timber clad. So instead of steel armor, uh, this used very thick planks of wood to try to protect the guns. Uh, this is uh, the Louisiana. Uh, not, not much, uh, you know, it was hardly much of a warship, but it's famous for one reason. Toward the end of the Civil War, there was one port that remained open to the south, and that was Wilmington, and it was guarded by Fort Fisher. Well, General Butler came up with this wonderful idea that he would load a ship full of explosives, uh, sail it up to the fort, and then detonate, and that was supposed to stun the Confederate defenders to the point that they could be overrun. Uh, the ship was successfully ignited, it blew up, uh, and uh, the amphibious landing was a catastrophe. Uh, it didn't stun anybody. Uh, 
This was a Confederate uh, defender called the McRae. This was a gunboat on the Mississippi when Farrah gets steamed up to take New Orleans. Uh, this cover is uh, extremely uh, rare and interesting in that uh, it's addressed uh, from the captain of the McRae uh, to his brother, who was an army officer. Uh, the McRae engaged the Union fleet. Uh, it managed to break off and get back to New Orleans, where it promptly sank. Uh, the captain uh, uh, died of his wounds. Mahopak, again, a monitor. And you can see these were used both at sea and on the rivers. This is a ship called the Manitou, another gunboat. Uh, this is a college stern wheeler. You notice the uh, uh, paddle wheel at the rear of the uh, gunboat. Here is the Merrimack. And uh, this became uh, the ironclad Virginia. It was scuttled at Norfolk, but the South raised it. Uh, and uh, it came up with the idea of uh, sheathing it in iron. Uh, and uh, we all know what happened. Uh, in the end, after it engaged the, uh, the monitor, uh, it withdrew and it was subsequently uh, burned by her own crew uh, when the Northern troops invaded Norfolk. The Miami, uh, that's another side wheel gunboat. This is one of the ships that engaged the Albemarle. This one survived. The Minnesota, uh, was one of the ships that was uh, blockading Norfolk when the uh, Virginia came out uh, in attempts to move. It got itself stuck on a shoal. And uh, the monitor, when it arrived, put itself between the stuck Minnesota and the uh, Merrimack and successfully protected the ship. Uh, this is the Mississippi, uh, a uh, side wheel frigate. Uh, this was one of the ships from Admiral Perry's expedition to Japan. It was, uh, it ended its days sunk at Vicksburg. Uh, it grounded and uh, it was uh, pounded uh, until it sank. Here is a cover from the monitor itself. Uh, I was very fortunate to find this cover. Uh, the paymaster Keeler, there's a picture of him below the cover. If you ever get a chance to tour the uh, museum at Newport News, you'll find an entire room in the museum dedicated to Keeler and his correspondence. You'll also find a monitor turret. Okay, yes, yes, you yes, you do. Uh, this is the Montauk. This is another monitor. Mound City, as you can see, here's another Pook gunboat. Uh, the Mound City had some bad luck uh, in one engagement. Uh, it was hit in the steam pipe and uh, it scalded uh, the men inside the ship. The Nahant, that was another monitor. The Nashville, here is another hospital ship. And uh, this one, as you can see on the cover, it even says uh, on board hospital boat, Nashville. And uh, it was a fairly successful hospital ship. 
new iron sides. Uh, this was an experimental ironclad. Uh, it uh, was a failure as an experiment because it was largely unmaneuverable. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it was hit often by Southern forts at Charleston and uh, it was impervious to their shells. The Niagara was a screw frigate. The Octorara, uh, that was uh, in the uh, Battle of Mobile Bay. In fact, one of the covers, the lower left one, yeah, you can see is addressed to the ship at Mobile Bay. In fact, both of the covers are. Uh, the Oneida screw sloop again. Uh, here's a, a picture of uh, the battle uh, between the US Navy coming up river uh, to New Orleans and uh, Oneida was part of that. Orvetta, this was one of these uh, mortar um, schooners and you can see a mortar here sitting on the deck. Osage, that's a very odd looking, it was a river monitor. So it's very low lying. Again, it was a, at one time a steamboat and they turned it into this uh, odd looking uh, vessel. Uh, this one was actually sunk by a mine. Uh, the Washita, another Mississippi gunboat. Palmetto State, here is a Southern ironclad. The North did not sink. Uh, again, Confederate cover. You can see the Confederate stamp of Jack Davis. Uh, the uh, Palmetto was scuttled when uh, Sherman uh, brought his army North to Charleston. Passaic. That's a, uh, another monitor. The Tapsco, another monitor. And again, the, these are primarily uh, were used to uh, try to shut off Charleston. Uh, and uh, there were numerous attempts to take the forts, all of which failed. This is a Southern uh, warship called the Patrick Henry. Uh, it was uh, essentially the uh, school ship for Southern Naval officers. The Piosta, another uh, gunboat. Pittsburgh. Uh, another uh, ironclad for the rivers. This one was uh, at Vicksburg. Uh, it was at uh, Island 10. Uh, it was at uh, Fort Donaldson. So it had a very uh, good uh, history. Portsmouth, this was a uh, sailing sloop. There still were some sail ships used during the Civil War. Quaker City, this was primarily a transport. Red Rover was a hospital ship. This is uh, the most famous one during the Civil War. Reindeer, another gunboat. Uh, Richmond, another sloop. The San Jacinto, this was famous. Uh, if you take yourself back to high school and you remember the Trent incident where Union warships stopped a British merchant vessel to remove Confederate agents, uh, they were going to England uh, 
to uh, represent the South, uh, Lincoln had to uh, free them in the end. Oops. There's a, uh, another large side wheel gunboat called the Santiago de Cuba. And as you can see, there were penalty envelopes in the Civil War. Uh, Skiota, a screw gunboat. Southfield, uh, this was a side wheel gunboat. Uh, this one was sunk by the Albemarle. Stono started as a merchant ship, uh, then it became a union ship. Uh, then uh, it uh, was uh, captured by the South uh, and it was, uh, it ended its days trying to run the blockade and was wrecked. Again, a Confederate cover, very, very rare. Uh, Thomas Freeborn, uh, this is just a side wheel gunboat. And here's a uh, depiction of a Confederate mine. This is how the uh, mines worked during the Civil War. Tyler was a timber clad. Uh, it was famous uh, primarily for the early battles of the Civil War, uh, particularly Fort Donaldson. Uh, that's where uh, Grant got his name, Unconditional Surrender Grant. Unadillo, uh, this was uh, again uh, fighting uh, off Charleston. Uh, this one was at Fort Fisher during the amphibious attacks. Uh, Undyne, as you can see, another gunboat. This was uh, captured by the South. Vincennes, uh, this is a fairly famous ship. Uh, this took part in what was called the Exploring Expedition, uh, where it went to the South Seas uh, and it explored Antarctica. Uh, it was part of the Wilkes Expedition and uh, it survived into the Civil War Wachusett, uh, this uh, was another uh, screw sloop. Uh, this one earned its claim to fame by refusing to recognize Brazilian neutrality. Uh, the Confederate raider Florida was hiding at a port in, in Brazil. Uh, this ship uh, violated uh, the neutrality, seized the Confederate ship and dragged it back north. Woodford, this is uh, another hospital ship. And this belonged to uh, Ellett's force. Uh, here's a side wheel tug. This one's called the Yankee. And I believe that's it. So what you uh, saw here is a uh, one-tenth of my Civil War naval collection. So you can see I'm very uh, uh, enthusiastic about the subject. Bravo. Well done. Beautiful collection. Very good. Yeah. Really, uh, you enjoyed? Beautiful. Yeah. Um, what's the matter? If anyone has any uh, questions, let me know. Uh, I did want to put in a plug for uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Still Silverstone's book. Uh, it's called Civil War Navies, 1855 to 83. Uh, it's been worth its weight in gold to me. Uh, it sorts out which ships fought in the Civil War, which came uh, after the Civil War, it allows you to collect with uh, with knowledge. Any questions? Yeah. 
couple of thoughts. Some of these um, riverine ships were actually built in Carondelet. We call it Carondelet. Yeah. Which is a suburb, which was a independent little town outside of St. Louis, which has the misfortune of now being part of St. Louis. Oh. <laughs> these, these, these boats were built by James Eads, who went on to build the Eads Bridge across the Mississippi River. Right. Yep. If you get a chance to see the monitor turret, it is well worth seeing. You can actually see the cannonball impressions of the side of the turret. We've been to that museum twice, and neither time was the turret out of the water. So I, I could look down at it, but that's it. I talked to them about that and what the, when I was there last. And what they said was this. The turret actually is a composite. There's a steel or a iron outer shell, a wooden, I think it's oak inner Mm -hmm. yeah, inner ring and then another iron ring and they're afraid to take it completely out of the water and display it out of the water because they're afraid the whole thing is going to crumble uh, and no museum curator wants to be the guy that's responsible for crump for turning the <laughs> no. first rotating turret into a, a, a flakes yeah. of rust and wood well, that makes it's, sense it's well worth it's it's well worth seeing so yeah i agree i agree and i could say um I'm very interested in looking for photographs of Civil War Navy ships. They're quite scarce. Yes. Many ships, there are no photographs. And interestingly enough, there is no photograph of the Merrimack, either as a Union ship or as a Confederate ship. Right. There are no photographs of the Monitor full length. There are a couple of pictures taken on board. And until a few years ago, there were no pictures of the Alabama, but we discovered one, a couple actually, taken in Singapore in 1863. And um, it's a great thing to be able to, for me at least, to be able to find the photograph of some of these ships that uh, don't seem to exist anymore. Right. It's extraordinary that the three most famous ships of the Civil War, there were no photographs. Now it's only two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just had the misfortune, you know. Be, you know, it, it couldn't pose for Brady. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Did you have a question, Joe? Oh no, I just got a kick out of your answer, and I I think that's a wonderful collection. I didn't even know all that existed, you know, what you were showing. I knew, you know, about the ship, but I never thought about the mail. Right, right. Oh, the collection's great. Really terrific. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I've enjoyed it a lot. You must have done a lot of hunting for that. Oh, yeah. For those covers. It's, it's, it's 25 years of effort there. Yep. <laughs> So it'll be on the auction block very, very soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm 69, so not too long to wait. We need federal financing for that. <laughs> the youngster. Maybe it's part of the Build Back Better bill. I guess. We got about everything else covered. You may That's have the most awesome. valuable collection of anybody from the prices I've seen on some of that Confederate stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, you, you just don't, don't see it. Uh, if you have an opportunity to get one, uh, uh, you know, don't, don't pass it by. Well, some things came out of the safe deposit box, got scanned for this, and then got put back in the safe deposit box. Let's hmm. put it that way. Yeah. Just a comment. If, uh, I was wondering if anybody was aware of that uh, Civil War Naval Museum that's in the uh, Columbus, Georgia. No. no. Uh, I forget what river uh, is there. They did have uh, some shipyards that built uh, uh, Confederate, uh, smaller Confederate ships. Um, just accidentally stumbled on it, wasn't even aware that it was there. But one of the things they have is the uh, remains of one of these uh, Civil War uh, gunboats that they were able to uh, kind of raise and the missing parts they filled in with steel framework. So you have an idea 
what the uh, boat actually looked like when it was in service. Is that the ship that, that's at Vicksburg? No, I'm not Vicksburg, Columbus, Georgia. Uh, yeah, the Cairo. I don't know. They they brought up the the uh, Cairo at uh, Vicksburg. Yeah, and they made uh, a mess. Unfortunately, they really screwed it up. <laughs> they when they raised it, they didn't put a a support under the middle of the ship. So of course they got the ironclad out of the water and it promptly broke in half and spilled all the guts. That would be at the Chattahoochee River. In in Georgia, you mean? Yeah, that's the one at, uh, in Columbus, Georgia. That's the Chattahoochee. OK, I'll have to look into that. Anything else? Well, what is the earliest known hospital ship? Uh, one of the oh, ones I showed, I showed you was the first. Um, I, I don't recall which one it was. Well, the Red Rover was the famous one. Red, Red Rover was the famous one, but that wasn't first. No. Did they use any of those hospital ships when they uh, relieved Andersonville Prison? Not that I'm aware of. There was no river nearby, so they couldn't get the hospital ship there. Now, there was one ship which blew up with a tremendous loss of life, the Sultana. Right, <laughs> right. That's the where they, they were uh, taking them home. They were taking them Hello? north. Yeah. That wasn't a hospital ship, though. I'll get supper ready. But it was carrying a lot of troops. I think the war was over at that point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is it this one? Who? The DH one. Is that the first? I don't know. It would say if it's uh, at the top. Well, if I can put in a plug, <clears throat> my Civil War book is, is only one of five because I cover the entire Navy from 1775 to 2007, and the new book will bring it up to date. So it covers every period of the Navy's history, every ship. Well, let, let me know when that uh, comes on the market. Probably September, maybe. I just delivered it. Now I have to wait for the proof. Yeah. OK, then. Well, I appreciate you all attending. And uh, keep in touch. We're still looking for somebody to take over a May presentation. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Thank, thank you for a lovely afternoon. You're very well. Very take good. care, Mel. Steve, well done. I'll talk to you via email. Oh, Thank take you. care. Thank you, everyone. Amazing collection. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. That was excellent. Thank you. See you Thank all you. next month, I hope. Well, we hope so too.